Whether you drive your backhand with two hands or one, it's really important that you also develop a slice. This will allow you to deal with a much bigger variety of shots, but also it will help you to send a much bigger variety of shots, which if you do correctly, is gonna help you on the match court. Once you've developed a decent drive and slice, one of the biggest problems that people have is knowing when to hit them. So in today's video, I'm gonna be helping you out with that. I'm gonna break the video down into three sections. First, I'll be talking about why you would choose one shot over the other. Then we'll be discussing when is the best time to do each shot. And finally, we'll be looking at how you can execute it most effectively. And like in all of my videos, if you hang around to the end, I've got a bonus tip for you. Let's check it out. First off, why would you choose one over the other? A drive backhand, whether you're hitting with one hand or two hands, can be hit flat or with topspin. Generally, if you're looking to attack and take your opponent's time away, a flat backhand is the quickest way to do so, as you can hit that with much more power than any other shot. However, if you want to be aggressive with bigger margins, adding topspin can be a good way to do that, as when you add topspin to a backhand, it can create more of an arc shape, clearing the net, but also getting that ball to drop slightly shorter and kicking up after it's bounced. If you compare the drive to a slice backhand, a slice will travel through the air much slower and after it's bounced, it won't travel as far afterwards. So it's not a great shot if you're looking to push your opponent backwards. However, it can be good to bring them forwards if that's something you want to do. Generally, slice is really good for defense as when you're out of position, it's much more versatile. We'll talk about that in a second as well. Another reason you might choose the slice is to change up the pace. As we said before, hitting a slice backhand reduces the ball speed, which can actually buy you more time to recover for your next ball. So if you think about your drive versus slice and how that affects your time within the point, a drive is gonna take your opponent's time away, whereas a slice is gonna to help to give you more time for your next ball. Before I get into the next section where I talk about when you would use the drive over the slice, it's important to know that you can use the slice in an attacking way. Because a slice shot bounces much lower than a flat or a topspin shot, it can help you to push your opponent's contact point beneath the height of the net. And if you can do this, it's gonna force them to hit upwards, allowing you to attack on the next ball. A slice is also a really good way to hit a drop shot. So if you are an experienced slicer, it can also be a good way to attack. We'll talk a little bit more about that in the next section. So next up, we're gonna talk about when you would choose to drive your backhand and when you would choose to slice your backhand. And for now, we're gonna keep it really simple. As when you watch the professionals play, there is a lot more variety, but if you can keep your decision very, very simple, it's gonna be much easier for you to execute with clarity. And hopefully, you'll be able to execute the shots much, much better. So for now, for the most simplicity, if you're in a good position for your backhand, you've prepared your racket and your feet nice and early, and you're able to make contact with the ball in a comfortable position, that's when you should be looking to drive your shot and to put your opponent under pressure. However, like I said before, if you've got a really good slice, you can actually use an aggressive slice in this position as well. So anytime you're in a good position, when you're looking to attack or put your opponent under pressure, you should look to drive or hit that attacking slice shot. However, when you're in a bad position, let's say when you're jammed up or you're making contact with a much higher ball, much lower ball, or even stretching, this is when you should be slicing the ball. And this would be more of a defensive slice or a neutralizing slice where your aim is to get the ball back in play and to buy yourself some time for the next ball. By slicing the ball, the ball's gonna stay in the air for much longer, giving you time to make a good recovery. Now, the stronger you are as a player, the more opportunities you're going to get to drive your backhand. There are two main areas that will help you to hit more drive backhands. Number one is by improving your footwork and your anticipation, so getting to the ball earlier. And number two is increasing the size of your comfort zone. And you do this by practicing your drive backhand from more different situations. Now, if you picture my drive backhand, I am most comfortable making contact with the ball anywhere between my knee height and my shoulder height. So anytime I'm out of position and I need to contact the ball above my shoulder height, I will opt for the slice. Equally, if the ball drops beneath my knee height, I would opt for a slice. But anytime the ball is within my comfort zone between my knees and my shoulders, that's when I'm gonna be driving my backhand. But if I trained my drive backhand out of my comfort zone more often and actually practice dealing with these higher balls and these lower balls, then I can actually expand my comfort zone, meaning that I'm gonna have more opportunities to be able to drive through the ball. Now, if you're a less experienced player, you might have a much smaller hitting zone. It could be that you're only good at driving your backhand when you hit the ball at waist height. What this does, it really limits how many drive backhands you can hit in an open match situation. And you're gonna have to end up slightly 
slicing a lot more often than not. This is true for single and double-handed backhands. So if you can figure out where you're most comfortable hitting your drive, then in a match situation, that can really help you to make clear and concise decisions. Something else to consider before I talk about how to hit your backhands more effectively is your court surface. Now, if you're playing on a clay court, the ball's gonna be bouncing slightly higher. So your topspin backhands are gonna be more effective. Whereas on a grass court or a slightly faster hard court surface, the ball bounces much, much lower generally. So your topspin backhand isn't going to be as effective as it might sit up in your opponent's comfort zone. However, your slice is going to bounce much, much lower, so can be more effective. So when you're playing on a faster surface and the ball is in your comfort zone, you might opt to hit more slices than drives. You also need to consider your opponent as some players love hitting the ball from a height, but hate it down low and vice versa. So knowing your surface and knowing your opponent's strengths and weaknesses can really help you when it comes to the decision making. But overall, if it's in your comfort zone, drive or aggressive slice. And if it's out of your comfort zone, slice to defend or neutralize. So next, I'm gonna talk about how you can make the change between your drive and your slice. And one of the biggest factors is how your technique might differ between the two. And this includes your grip. Now for me as a double-handed backhand player, it's actually much easier to make the change between the drive and the slice because my base hand, my dominant hand for me, my right hand, is using the continental or chopper grip. And I actually use this for both the slice and the drive. The only difference between the two is how I prepare my offhand. Now, if I were to prepare for a drive backhand, I need to make sure that my offhand is in the grip in the relevant position. Now, for me, that's an Eastern grip on this side. For other people, it might be a little bit more around to semi-Western, but if you're hitting a drive and you've got a two-handed backhand, you want both hands to be on the grip. Whereas if you're preparing for a slice backhand, most players find it easier preparing with their off hand or their non-dominant hand on the neck of the racket. Now for a single-handed backhand player, they're normally gonna have their offhand on the neck of their racket for both their drive and their slice, but they may have to make a grip change between the two. The most common grip change you'll see a single-handed backhand player have to make is the chopper or continental grip for the slice, but moving around towards an Eastern backhand grip for their drive backhand. Now, the reason why your decision-making is really, really important is you need to make that decision early enough so that you've got time to make that grip change if you're a single-handed backhand player or to adjust your offhand if you're a double-handed player. A drill that I like to use to train your decision-making and to make that decision-making even quicker is rallying with a partner or even hitting with a ball machine. Generally, a partner's gonna be better as you're gonna get more random balls coming in towards you. And during your rally, you're going to call whether you're driving or slicing the backhand before you hit it. Now, at the start, you want to make that call before the ball bounces on your side of the court. So during your rally, as you prepare, you're either gonna call drive and then you'll hit your drive backhand or you're gonna call slice before the ball bounces so that you've got time then to execute the slice. You can do this out loud or even in your head if you want to, but make sure that you commit to your decision before the ball bounces on your side of the court. Now that's just the starting point because actually we want to make that decision even earlier. So your next step is can you call out your decision before your opponent's shot crosses the net? If you manage that easily, then your next job is to see if you can call it even earlier. At the start of this exercise, you're gonna make some bad decisions, which is fine, but by calling them out, you're making yourself accountable and you're being really, really strict with whether you're slicing or driving your backhand. The more you practice it, the easier those decisions become. One little tip though, don't just shout it out and prepare like normal. As soon as you shout out drive or slice, exaggerate how early you can prepare that racket. It's only gonna help you to execute the shot better if you have more time on the ball. Once your decision making is really, really good, the next stage to improve your backhand is to try to hit more drives or attacking slices than defensive ones. So work really hard on your positioning and your ball tracking skills and increase the size of your comfort zone to be able to do that. Now, as promised, there is a bonus tip for you as you've stayed through the whole video. And this one is talking about disguise. 
Now, if you prepare your backhand in a very, very obvious way, your opponent is going to know when you're going to drive the ball or when you're going to slice it. But if you can disguise your backhand, it's going to make it much, much tougher for your opponent to read. This is especially important if you're using your slice to be a drop shot. Now, if you hit your backhand with two hands, the best way to disguise your drop shot or your backhand slice is to actually hold the racket in your normal double-handed drive grip. If you prepare your racket in this way, you can simply let go with your offhand and cut underneath the ball as you're already in your slice grip. This is slightly more difficult to do if you've got a single-handed backhand, but what you need to try to do is make that grip change at the back of your swing, but keep your racket face in the same position for your normal drive. What you'll notice when you prepare for your normal drive backhand as a single-handed player is your strings are more upright like this, pointing to the side or pointing forwards. Whereas when you prepare for a slice or a drop shot, your strings are more open. So try to keep this position here, slip around to the chopper grip, and then you'll be able to put much more disguise on the ball. One thing to think about though, before disguise, execution is more important. There's no point in disguising a shot if you're gonna end up missing it. So practice mastering the execution of the shot first, and once you feel confident at hitting the drop shot and the slice and mixing between those and the drives, that is the time to think about disguising it. Thanks as always for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, pop a comment below, and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. See you next time.